ஹலோ குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் வேண்ட் ஆல் மை செல்ஃப் பாவ்னா லெக்சரர் இன் எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் ஆன் த பிஹாஃப் ஆஃப் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் எலக்ட்ரானிக்ஸ் ஐ இன்வைட் ஈச் அண்ட் எவ்ரி ஒன் டு த செகண்ட் செஷன் ஆஃப் த டே ஒன் நேஷனல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் ஆன் அட்வான்ஸ்மெண்ட்ஸ் இன் கம்யூனிகேஷன் கம்ப்யூட்டிங் அண்ட் இன்டர்நெட் ஆஃப் திங்ஸ் ஓகே டுடே ஸ்பெஷல் ஸ்பீக்கர் ஃபார் திஸ் ஸ்பெஷல் ஸ்பீக்கர் ஃபார் திஸ் செஷன் இஸ் டாக்டர் லக்ஷ்மி நாராயணா தல்லூரி அசோசியேட் ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஏலியட் விஜயவாடா to give the brief introduction of the today he is going to give the te- uh, topic on iot technology for smart applications to give the introduction of the our speaker i like to invite mr veera babu garu lecturer in electronics andhra loyola college uh, dr lakshmi narayana taluri assistant professor in electronics and communication engineering he has number of publications the international publications are 17 and national publications are 10 has a lot of experience as total experience of 19 years experience in teaching and also has published number of books in that rf nens which is design simulation fabrication and characterization in the year of 2019 and his research co- contribution in fabrication characterizer switch capacity to rf nens switch during fifth to 23rd february 2018 and program organizing by speaking two day workshop and roles on trans- transducer and programmable device in the control and medical application using ot he has interesting research areas sir rf mens switches and iot and robotic centro and wireless sensor networks and sensor and accuracy uh, image and speech process has a number of uh, he organizes a number of workshops as the roles of transducer and programmable device in control and medical appli- application using iot and roles of transducer and programmable device in iot application in andhra lairo institute of engineering and technology vijayawada during 12th and 14th december 2017 has a lot of technical skills in that math lab or uh, uh, mems designing or server and hardware and hdl simulation like that etc uh, thank you for giving this opportunity to introduce our speaker thank you veerabhav garu for giving your introduction of the, our speaker lakshmi narayana tanluri garu now i hand over the session to the lakshmi narayana garu sir can you hear my voice yes ma'am it's audible thank you sir so you can take the session sure ma'am sure is my screen is visible ma'am yes sir yes sir first of all thanks for the uh, nice introduction and uh, special thanks to the organizers of national conference on advancements in communi- communication computing and internet of things now my research is on iot technology for smart applications now today i am going to give some ideas and challenges and what is the scope of the iot technology in the design of smart applications now this is the outline of my presentation completely about iot and their challenges and implementation implementation aspects now first let me start with the definition of the iot iot is nothing but a network a physical objects the devices vehicles buildings and other items comes under embedding with the electronics and some software as well as the sensors enable these objects to collect and exchange the data now 
we are going to provide some internet to the sensors and we'll give some location to send the data to that particular location with the help of the data we can design some smart applications and which will help us to take the smart decisions now when we are designing any iot system these are the basic things we require input it requires some physical parameters physical parameters means if it is the medical related internet of things system physical parameters means blood pressure now ecg this comes under physical parameters after that it consists some signal processing modules as well as digitalization next part the controller will take care of the next part from the controller by using one communication module the collected physical data it is going to send to the database and we can access those database information by designing web applications or some android applications also we can design these applications will help the users end users in taking the smart decisions now this is the basic architecture of an iot system now from the participants any queries means you can interrupt me and you can ask your queries anyone please respond is my voice is audible yes your voice is audible sir yes Uh, once if you see the layer model of iot it has the four layers first layer is integrated application layer generally you can call it as the application layer that depends on the which application for which application we are designing the iot system it may be the green building smart grid smart transport and environment some agriculture applications also you can design next layer information processing now in information processing you can take the search engine smart decisions information security data mining and data centers here we have a lot of opportunities for the researchers next one is the network construction now the iot system it may be for wireless lan wireless man as well as pan as well as wan in some internet also we can use the last layer is the sensing layer yes yeah. i'm i'm yeah. sorry i'm sorry sir excuse me uh, your slides are not uh, changing can you please uh, have a look about it yes then sir then thank you now now is it visible yes yes it's visible sir thank you now these are the basic layer model of the iot here you can easily understand this uh, what is the significance of each and every layer and in the last layer sensing layer or you can call it as a perception layer there we are going to deal with the, all the sensors as well as the actuators the network layer basically deals with the communication module whether uh, the implementation of iot system that is using the zigbee or lora module or whether we are using the wifi module or some advanced nb iot we are using these things are related to the network construction and information processing once the data is co collected then <clears throat> the information processing will coming to the picture after processing the information it will help us to take the smart decision and in searching purpose also and data mining these things comes under information processing this is the iot model now what is the significance of this iot technology it has the great potential which will make the things easy and because of his potential and ability it has the so many applications 
now in environmental monitoring we can use for the military applications we can use especially in covid 19 uh, pandemic time you can use this iot technology in the medical applications also we can use the same thing in smart cities and some wearable technology also we can use in the wearable applications also in smart homes also we can use this iot technology it has the great potential and it, it has the ability to serve in the different areas now especially in the agriculture also we can use it has the great potential in agriculture as well as the aquaculture applications to monitor the important parameters which will help to increase the yield now these are the smart applications in wearable technology everyone using these control of refrigerators nowadays we are already using these type of smart appliances now in healthcare medical application if you are taking any hospital uh, we'll have only the few expertise doctors in covering the all the patients in the hospital with the only one or two expertise doctors it's not possible now we can overcome this problem with the help of iot technology now if the each and every patient is enabled with the iot as well as few sensors and if we are able to collect the patient information and if we are able to store that information in the server and with the help of smart application that particular doctor who has specialized in that area he can monitor the all the patients reports and he he will give you the best prescription for the patients now other smart applications are we can take the industry now if you see this industry all the things are enabled with the internet once the industry is enabled with the internet uh, we can control the modules as well as we can avoid the few disasters especially we are seeing in the chemical industry some harmful gases are going to release it is going to create some lot of damage in the environment that's why to monitor these all things and to create some awareness in the uh, local citizens now we can use the iot internet of things now in future we can imagine smart cities everywhere in all the areas are enabled with the iot technology now let us imagine a shopping mall enabled with the iot technology we have a lot of advantages with that advantage means by sitting at your home you can monitor what is the crowd in that particular shopping mall if there is a less crowd means you can schedule your shopping if there is a more crowd you can postpone that now in railways also if the trains are enabled with the iot we have the special advantage now earlier uh, two or three years back tracking the train it's not possible now all the trains are enabled with the iot now the tracking is possible now location of that particular train whether it is in vijayawada or vaisa we can track and based on the delay actually our railway system it has the they are going to run with some delay to overcome that one if you want to save the time you can track the train accordingly you can reach the railway stations now in the industry also in the construction also we can use the we can take the help of the iot now in power production everywhere in future you can imagine 
in different aspects the iod is going to serve which will makes the things easy and you can save the time now in the industry now finding the experts are crane operators it is too difficult and they will charge the more for hours basis but if the cranes are enabled with the iot then only one expert can operate the multiple cranes now in construction field we require the more number of cranes at that in that place all the cranes are enabled with the iot and only one operator can operate the more number of cranes now it is the one more smart application of iot now here uh, my research is on smart city iot system design and we are going to deal with the network layer routing analysis as well as what is the role of blockchain security based implementation now in our lab we are designing some smart city iot systems and we are trying to improve the performance in the network level as well as in the security aspects also now in smart city we have the so many parameters are there in that we consider these few parameters waste management water quality and solar radiation and some iconic places we need to maintain some details about the iconic places e sessions now we require few parking areas and we need to we must and should have some information whether the parking area is empty or full now pro information also we need to provide public relation officer and some sound pollution levels air quality levels video surveillance uh, this video surveillance especially in the covid 19 pandemic if the cameras are if we use the thermal cameras if we use the thermal cameras then based on the temperature these thermal cameras are capable of identifying the uh, person temperatures with the help of that we can easily identify the covid 19 affected patients now when we are implementing in iot system it deals with the perception layer network layer middleware layer as well as the application layer in the perception layer we have the first we need to select the controllers or smart boards and sensors now we have the so many boards we have arduino raspberry pi beagle bone we have the so many boards are available here we are designed the system with the raspberry pi and the things means it may be the sensors or actuators we use it some ultrasonic sensors thermal cameras and some air pollution related sensors now in coming to the network layer it deals with the which communication module we are using and some protocols also here we are used wifi to transmit the data why because we can uh, design the same system with the help of lora modules also but we are using some video surveillance that's why sending those videos using lora module it's not possible that's why we are using wifi module we have some alternatives also now in the application layer uh, we are dealing with the mqtt protocol mqtt stands for message queuing 
telemetry transport and some transport layer we are using tcp and udp protocols and network we are using ipv4 protocols uh, here uh, we are designing we have some third party cloud platforms are available but here we design our own cloud and we design our own web application to monitor the smart city parameters now mainly when we are designing the smart city or smart iot applications we have few challenges are there we address these challenges these challenges we divide into network layer challenges as well as the implementation layer challenges in the network layer we have few challenges with the routing path loss congestion control reliability scalability as well as the quality of services and to overcome these challenges we find some solution that is we can use the network level simulation as well as the analysis actually in the iot generally the people directly they will go for the implementation without having the basic idea on the network level if you go for the direct implementation then the system will become expensive and it won't give you the expected performance to overcome these initially we simulated the iot topology with the help of network simulator and in the next level we are implemented that topology now in the implementation also we face a few challenges like security maintaining providing the good security storage and some data analysis and visualization also now especially here we are concentrate on the security aspects in the security aspects here we can provide the better security for the iot system with the help of blockchain technology or uh, sometimes you can use the icn and you can use the software defined networks also you can use now here in our implementation completely we use the blockchain technology which will help us to improve the security iot system security now anyone please tell me is my slides are changing or not yes sir no sir not now then what yeah just yes sir yes 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 Oh, why no one is responding amma please tell me if the slides are not changing here in my light laptop i am able to see my slides are changing now is it okay yes yes sir yes. now slides are changing now are you able to see Uh, yes sir it's going on very well now it is okay please go ahead now it's okay dr lakshmi okay. narangar sir 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 good afternoon sir okay okay sir okay now these are the parameters smart city parameters now is it visible smart city parameters the slide is visible Yes, sir. I want the application. Yes, yes, sir. I want the applications. Yeah, smart city parameters. Yes, sir. Yes, they are visible. Now here I am taking one small case study of smart city. Actually, we are working on design of IoT systems for the smart city applications. Here we consider these are the major parameters we consider. Uh, uh, our IoT system can monitor the waste management. and water quality and some solar radiation it is going to show some iconic places in the smart city and it will take some e sessions 
and it will give you some parking related information and it will provide you pro information public relation officer information and it is going to give you some sound pollution air quality readings and it will provide you some video surveillance also now here why we are why we are why we need to to monitor this water quality means recently in eluru we noticed some <clears throat> citizens are facing some problem with the contamination of water the main reason for that is because of no monitor on the water quality now if you are able to design one smart application which will help to monitor the water quality day to day monitoring of water quality then we can avoid such incidences now we don't know day to day the solar radiation levels are also increasing we must and should create some awareness in the citizens how to control those solar radiations by controlling the pollution levels now uh, air quality is also decreasing day to day and sound pollutions are increasing now this video surveillance generally we can use to track the covid-19 affected people and here is some comprehensive study on different technologies involved when we are designing the iot system in iot system it has the perception layer mm -hmm. network layer middleware as well as application layer in the perception layer it deals with the selection of boards as well as the sensors now coming to the smart boards we can use arduino raspberry pi as well as some beagle bone <laughs> modules also we can use and coming to the things means sensors and actuator based on the application the sensors and actuators are going to change now for smart city applications we use some ultrasonic sensors video surveillance thermal cameras we use <coughs> and to monitor the sound pollution we use it some sound sensors and coming to the network layer it deals with the network interface means communication module selection of communication module and design of some protocols design of some protocols here we use wifi module as a communication module in the place of wifi we can use some lora modules and some zigbee modules we can use but zigbee and lora they are it's not possible to transmit the videos streaming the videos it's not possible with the zigbee and lora that's why here we designed the network with the wifi and in the application layer we used mqtt protocol and in transport layer we use a tcp protocol and in the network layer we use ipv4 protocol in middleware it deals with the data storage data processing and cloud platform nowadays we have some cloud providers we have
but in our application we design our own cloud and our own databases and in the application layer we design our own application layer or application by using mysql as well as html and php server Now when we are designing this IoT system for smart city applications, from the literature, we notice it that it has some challenges in the network level as well as in the implementation level. In the network level, we have some routing issues, path loss, reliability, scalability, as well as the quality of service. These challenges we address with the network level simulation. Generally, IoT system means generally all the researchers directly they will go for the implementation. But here, initially, we simulated the IoT network. From the simulation, we identify the best routing topology and less path loss, and we improved the reliability of the network also. We used the network simulator three for that. Next. <coughs> Once, if you are able to identify the best routing topology for the selected smart city, next we have started the implementation. Without proper network simulation, directly if you go for the implementation, the system design will become the expensive. the implementation cost will increase to overcome this and to get the best performance a network simulation is essential now in the implementation also we have some potential challenges like security privacy and storage data analysis and some visualization challenges here primarily we are considered security aspects to provide the high security to the design IoT system. Here we can use possible solutions or we can use the IoT technology, we can incorporate it and we can use some ICN as well as software defined networks we can use. Here we incorporated the blockchain technology for the implementation which provides a good security. Now here, smart city IoT network topology analysis. What I said earlier, initially we are simulated the network with the help of some network simulator. Now in that each node, we need to define physical Mac. <laughs> wireless local area network, some network protocol, transmission protocol and application protocols in each and every layer. We use these technologies and we design one IoT topology with the sensing model IEEE 802.11 that is Wi-Fi and we consider the area 1000 square meters Number of IoT nodes, we in the range 10 to 30 and packet size, we consider 96 bits and 8000 seconds is the simulation time. These are the network parameters and this is the structure of the network. <clears throat> if you see each sensor node. Now, here. 
this is the smart city iot network topology here each sensor node is enabled with the wifi with the help of gateway or access point and this by using this network level protocol the data is sent to the application server through an internet server from the internet server to the application server we are going to use the tcp protocol now again any user want to access the data from the application server here we use mqtt protocol now this is the network topology what we consider for the smart city iot <coughs> and we simulated this topology in the net network simulator 3 now with the simulation <coughs> we extracted these parameters like throughput delay by changing the number of nodes now here when we are increasing the number of nodes from 2 to 30 now throughput we are able to achieve up to 18 to 20 mbps when we are using the wifi wifi based network it is offering the good throughput and it has the less delay now the number of duty cycles are increasing the delay factor is also going to reduce next one average power consumption also very less when we use wifi based iot network and we are getting the best packet delivery ratio in the range of 0.74 to 0.84 now coming to the latency also we the network is offering the good latency when we use mqtt protocol in the no sleep condition as well as in the sleep condition and these are the parameters what we extracted for this network and coming to the implementation here you can see for the smart city we consider the parking zone and water pollution some video surveillance and waste management air pollution levels in the smart city and sound pollution levels and some weather monitoring like temperature humidity next one is the solar radiation these are the parameters we consider to design the smart city iot and we interface it these all with the raspberry pi smart board computer or single board computer and each and every sensor is enabled with the wifi and this wifi through this wifi the sensor nodes are going to send the information to the application layer servers through the access points or gateways and after that we design one smart web application to monitor the smart city parameters now here in parking zone we used one ultrasonic sensor here which will help us whether parking area is available or it is already filled in the smart application we can monitor this now for water pollution to monitor the water pollution levels here we use ph sensor as well as dissolved oxygen sensors are some uh, 
harmful things are present in the water it will detect that next coming to the video surveillance here we are interfaced one camera to the raspberry pi that is thermal camera the thermal camera is capable of detecting the temperature levels of the citizens the temperature is high means we can recognize the person is infected with one virus now the same ultrasonic sensor we are using for waste management to monitor the air pollution now in delhi already the people are facing with the air pollution related problems earlier they don't have the required statistics how the air pollution levels are increasing with that the people are not taking care or the government is also not taking any action on controlling the air pollution now the people in delhi are severely severely infected with the respiratory problems they are facing lot of respiratory problems because of that air pollution now in sound pollution proper monitoring is essential for monitoring of sound pollution now days everyone is facing with some headache for these all headaches related problem sound pollution is the primary reason now proper monitoring of increasing in the sound pollution levels is also very very essential now whatever the fields we consider all the fields has some potential in the design of smart city now here especially what is the novelty in our system means here we covered the majority parameters in the smart city and here we are incorporated one blockchain technology also which will provide the better security and additional advantage here other than using the third party softwares or cloud environment here we design our own cloud environment at infrastructure as a service level and we used some wifi which is offering the streaming of videos also now here when we compare the mesh network with the distributed blockchain network in the mesh network all the nodes are interconnected and it has one common database it has one common database to the all the nodes if we have the common database for the all the nodes providing the security it is too difficult why because it has only one database location the hackers easily can hack that particular database now to overcome that problem if you are able to provide the data locations to each and every sensor node or databases to each and every sensor node and if you connect them internally then we can increase the security the iot system will become more strong and sturdy and which will handle the security which will provide you the better security that is the biggest advantage of 
incorporation of blockchain technology in iot internet of things in future now recently we observed the film star mahesh babu bank account is hacked the reason is they are not taking any security measures and they i think they are not used these type of techniques blockchain technology they are going to store the complete information in one location if you do like that means obviously the hackers it will become easy for them to hack your information to overcome these practical problems and to improve the security of your iot system you can create the multiple databases to each and every sensor nodes now what are the three key benefits of using blockchain for iot it will build the trust first thing and it will reduce the risk by increasing the security thing and the cost is also going to reduce and it will help us to accelerate the transactions and reduce the settlement time if you are having a single database then it required the more settlement time if you are able to create the multiple data locations then you can reduce the settlement time now here we used multiple sensors actuators as well as a few transducers we are using generally the transducers we know will convert one form of energy into the another form here you can take the sensors which will convert the mechanical energy into the electrical energy actuators will convert electrical to mechanical and bidirectional means they are capable to convert mechanical to electrical as well as electrical to mechanical okay here these are the different sensors commercial available sensors temperature humidity these sensors will convert electrical to mechanical next one actuators if you want to design any iot system we require these transducers sensors are actuators these actuators will convert electrical to mechanical now light bulb what the bulb will do it will convert it will take the electrical signal as the input and the output is the light that is mechanical now coming to the bidirectional transducers you can take the antennas what the antennas will do it will convert electrical to electromagnetic and electromagnetic to electrical now coming to the transducer design mechanism we can design these transducers based on the resistive capacitive inductive and ic based now every one of you are using the mobile phones in that we have the touch screen anyone tell me is it resistive or capacitive or inductive anyone
is capacity based now coming to the resistive some weight machine you can take they works under resistive base they are going to use some wind bridge oscillators are connected with the load cell if you are applying some force means the length of that load cell is going to change if the length length is changing the resistance parameters are also going to change accordingly the voltage is going to change now these weight machines some temperature sensor also works with the resistive principle now capacitive now just now i explain how mobile phones touch screen when you are selecting any icon on the screen means indirectly you are changing the distance between the parallel plates the distance is changing the capacitance is going to change based on the variation in the capacitance the controller is going to take the decision whether you want to close the folder or if you want to open that particular folder or file in the touch screen here is the internal working mechanism of the touch screen now you can design the sensor with the help of inductor also inductive based also <coughs> now for my implementation of smart city application here smart city parameters first we are start with the air quality in the air quality here we consider carbon monoxide nh3 nitrogen dioxide so2 these parameters and these are the critical ranges of these gases if we are not maintain these in the limit then we are going to get these effects that is headache a drowsiness some liver and kidney problems and respiratory problems that's why here a keen monitoring of these harmful gases in the environment it is very essential now to can monitor or to predict these gases here we use mq7 mq135 to detect the particular gas we need to change the sensors next one coming to the waste management here whether the bin level is filled or empty to detect that we use one ir sensor for water quality we use ph sensor as well as the nitrite sensor you know if you are not maintaining proper water quality in future it may leads to some cancer memory problems high blood pressure these are the severe healthy हेलो हेलो
air quality, sound pollution, <laughs> solar radiation, and some waste management. Here, this application we designed for the Vijayawada, and we deployed few sensor nodes in railway station, Ben Circle, as well as bus stand. These sensor nodes will give you the uh, collect the data related to the weather, water quality. After that, we can see the levels, weather quality as well as water quality levels in the each and every location. Now here, here we are selected the railway station, means it will display the parameters here something we can see the weather water quality here we are selected the weather temperature humidity similarly we can see the solar radiation levels sound pollution levels and air quality and water quality levels also now in future you can expect smart applications from the IoT technology. Excuse oh. me, Dr. TLN, uh, your presentation is not... Uh, your presentation, sir, is it, please. Sir, is, is it not visible? No, not visible, sir. Your slides are not visible, sir. No? Yeah, it's a streaming. Yeah, it's okay. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, your, your screen is visible. You can go ahead. Sir, please go ahead, sir. Implementation aspects slide is there. Did the in these three places we deployed the sensor nodes. From those sensor nodes, we are collected the data related to the air, solar, radiation, as well as water quality and waste management. <coughs> After that, by using this smart application, we can monitor Here, uh, we are selected the railway station. <clears throat> it is the railway station location. And here, weather, temperature, and humidity levels. It will display like this. This data we are collected from the sensors. DHT double one sensor. It will give you the some temperature and humidity information. And water quality, pH sensor. This is the web application what we designed for the smart city. Now, in future, we can expect some advanced applications with the IoT. That is, Google is already working on smart glasses and some wristwatches and in medical especially automatic drug delivery system now if you are wearing the google glasses it is connected with the internet 
and it will help us to recognize the person from the google database if the person has any bad track record you can avoid the interaction with them. and you can take some security measures also now the same goggles you can use to track your food activities let us say in the early morning you consumed some oil food like masala dosa which has the uh, uh, so many calories in the afternoon one of your friend offered a biryani immediately these goggles are going to recognize how many calories are in the biryani and whether the calories are exceeded the daily limit it will alert you don't take the too much it will help you to take the smart decision which will help to improve your health condition next these type of wrist watches you can already you are using in future you can expect the better smart watches or wrist bands which will give you the health related information nowadays for 30 35 years the people are getting heart attacks because of our busy schedules activities no one is taking care of their health now these iot technology will create the better awareness and definitely it will help you to improve your health conditions now automatic drug delivery system now if you take any sugar patient periodically they need to take some medicine sometimes generally they will forget taking the medicine medicine now if you design one a system and it is connected with the iot and if you program it periodically automatically it will give you the insert the drug into the body and not only these in future we can expect smart systems with iot now these are the references now this is the end of my presentation any queries what is the bandwidth of this band sir what is the bandwidth sir? of the band this band sir wristband that depends that depends on the application okay sir thank you sir sir how does it works sir how does it works means that that depends on the which application you are using if you are using some medical applications let us say it will monitor the bp levels or pulse now early morning if you are wearing that wrist watch and if you go for the walking it will tell you how many calories are burned and how much area you covered whether you covered the 1 km or 2 km with that how many calories are burned that is one more application you can use like that the wristband you can use in the different applications now the same thing you can the wristband is enabled with the gas sensor if there any harmful any gases harmful are nearby you then immediately it will alert you recently we noticed one problem in 
वाइज है सम गैस इंडस्ट्री केमिकल इंडस्ट्री सम हार्मफुल गैस आर रिलीज बट द लोकल पीपल दे डोंट हैव एनी अवेयरनेस दे आर डूइंग देयर रेगुलर एक्टिविटीज बट विद इन अ फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सेकंड्स दे आर कोलैप्स यू कैन अवॉइड दिस टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स व्हेन इफ यू आर वेयरिंग अ रिस्ट बैंड व्हिच इज capable of detection of harmful gases now Thank any other question yeah. sir another more another doubt sir actually we want to implement a project like a anti theft of mobiles how can we connect the mobile to a wristband uh, means how can we program it now actually we need to design one application which is capable of accessing the gps present in the mobile in every mobile we can track the location with the help of longitude and latitude values uh, we can easily identify the mobile location now the same thing if you are able to send to one web application and easily we can track that mobile where it is located for that we need <laughs> tell me a uh, means for uh, immediately when the theft has been done immediately within one or two minutes means uh, whenever the bluetooth connection is gone we want to send a message to the wristband or any key chain or something whatever we have the device with us just an uh, enable message means without any sure, sure we, can send, we can send we, we can design that one actually uh, you uh, your application is completely different uh, that is uh, mobile is connected with the bluetooth bluetooth or wifi module Uh, if, yes, if they if they are disconnected means immediately it need to send the message yes sir as we can uh, we can design we can by using the gsm module you can interface the gsm module one bluetooth module we can use by using some attention command you can connect the mobile with the bluetooth bluetooth module with that you can easily design yes implementation is possible okay sir uh, that's what i have a doubt for that one because we want to implement it means uh, by programming uh, we can implement or not uh, that was uh, my doubt yes. thank you sir you can implement yes any other queries thank you very much sir thank you ma'am thank you thank you very much sir for your brief session of the iot you have given a very uh, brief introduction about the layers how many layers are there in iot and how to implement it's very very good session and uh, we have differentiate between the sensors and the actuators and uh, how we can use applications in various smart cities and how can we make our city as smart as we thank you very much sir it is very valuable session for us and first of all i would like to thank the conference organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my research with the enthusiastic people and i would like to congratulate the team for organizing such a wonderful national conference and once again thanks to one and all thank you dr lakshmi narayan garu thank you so much for your kind presentation on the present day technology for a smart system using a internet of things
थैंक यू वन सेकेंड सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर now i request uh, dr d charmila participant number 2 of acharya nagarjuna university faculty are you there ma'am yes ma'am ma'am please go next to you ma'am are you uh, presenting ma'am ah uh, yes ma thank you ma'am take out the session okay. आफ्टर शर्मला मैम पार्टिसिपेट नंबर सिक्स सागिली सत्यप्रिया गारो केल यूनिवर्सिटी आर यू देर मैम मैम एस मैम वी आर देर मैम आफ्टर शर्मला मैम प्लीज कंटिन्यू द सेशन मैम सत्यप्रिया गारो बी रेडी मैम इज इट विजिबल यस मैम Okay. Advancements in communication, computing, okay, and okay. I would like to introduce myself as a lilac first, and everything as follows. I am Dr. Sharmila, working as faculty in the Department of Electronics and Instrumentation Technology in Acharya Nagar Jena University. I feel it as privilege to present this paper in my mother institute. This is my research topic: triple octagonal microstrip patch antenna for satellite applications. Presentation outline: introduction of microstrip patch antennas, research objectives, design methodology, design of triple octagonal ring slot antenna, simulation results, and conclusions. I think you have some idea regarding this antennas because already we attended for morning session. uh there are various types of antennas available my research in uh, microstrip patch antennas microstrip patch antennas are nothing but a class of planar antennas which have been researched and developed extensively in last four decades we have sorry become a... madam madam we are sorry for interruption can you please oh, increase no your volume can you please increase your volume madam okay okay Like your uh, speaking tone, ma'am, not your speakers. Your speaking okay. tone. Sir, is it audible? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am, it's audible. Can you please increase your volume a little bit? Your tone, your okay. speaking tone. Microstrip uh, antennas are popular because of their uh, properties like low profile, multiband behavior, polarizations, and reconfigurability. The main theme of this work is to design triple octagonal microstrip patch antenna using microstrip feed line. The proposed ring slot technique is aimed to achieve multiband operations in ultra high frequency, super high frequency, and extreme high frequency spectra. this uh, design uh, antenna can resonate at 11 frequencies and it covers 6 uh, uh, micro microwave bands actually microwave frequency spectrum range between 1 gigahertz to 100 gigahertz this spectrum again divided into number of frequency bands basing on different organizations different uh, uh, like uh, ietp like that uh, there are different uh, organizations assign different names for this uh, microwave frequency spectrum uh, these bands can be observed um, by this table frequency uh, frequency range first column represents frequency range second column represents frequency band and corresponding their applications this is continuation of first table uh now proposed antenna can resonate all these six frequency bands c band x band k band k band k a band and b band uh it can be used for satellite mainly used for fixed satellite applications design methodology of microstrip patch antennas microstrip patch is uh, nothing but microstrip antennas are nothing but a patch
Microstrip antennas designed. These patches may be any shape like rectangular, rectangular or square, triangular, circular, or any shape. As um, basing on our requirement, basing on our application, patch uh, shape may be vary. This is basic structure of microstrip patch antenna. This is the dielectric substrate patch. And this is the ground uh, ground surface. The, this patch is conductor which is etched on the dielectric substrate. Radiation uh, uh, antenna radiation patterns mainly depends on size and shape of this patch. Generally, this patch made with uh, either gold or copper. Next one is dielectric substrate. It is very important uh, for our Research, we use uh, RT Duride 5880 glass microfiber reinforced PTFE composite because uh, this is uh, this exhibits less electrical loss. So that's why we prefer this Duride 5880 component. Its dielectric constant approximately equal to 2.2. This is ground plane. Nothing but large sheet of metal below the substrate. This is the basic structure of microstrip patch antenna. Generally, we use different feeding techniques to radiate the antenna. There are, very, uh, there are different types of uh, feeding techniques available. These feeding techniques are contacting type and non-contacting type. In contacting type, again, classified into two types, microstrip and coaxial type. In non-contacting type, aperture coupled and approximately coupled but we prefer microstrip line because um, which is easy to easy to uh, fabricate this is the structure of microstrip feed line microstrip feed line is directly here we can observe ma'am excuse me ma'am okay. okay your slides are not uh, moving sir One minute. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, microstrip feed. Ah, yes. Once change the other Microsoft style, ma'am. Will... Yes, yes. We can carry on, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is a uh, microstrip feed line. Now, feed line is directly here. We can observe this is feed. Feed is directly connected to the periphery of the radiating patch. This is a radiating patch. The single lumbar port is used to uh, as an input of antenna excitation with 50 micro strip line. This is 50, 50 micro, micro ohms strip line. Main advantage of this uh, microstrip feed line is it can be easily etched on the same substrate. That is the main advantage of this microstrip feed. Disadvantage is uh, it can cause to produce cross polarization levels. So that is the main disadvantage. And uh, basing on this patch, we can adjust this uh, feed line also. So it may cause some radiation. Radiation may be increased by this feed line. This is the one of the disadvantages of microstrip feed. Generally, any mag, uh, any antenna, uh, uh, electric antenna, can generate either magnetic, electro, electrical, and magnetic fields. So it uh, it radiates in different types, either isotropic radiation. Our directional radiation, our omnidirectional patterns. There are different types of radiation patterns. This is isotropic. Isotropic means antenna radiates equal in all directions. The radiated patterns is in spherical shape. Directional antenna radiates in some direction. Omnidirectional pattern means uh, it radiates horizontal beam width of few tens of degrees. This three types of radiations we can observe from antenna. Design of microstrip patch antenna using HFSS. 
various uh, simulation softwares are available for designing this microstrip patch, uh, patch antenna CTS and various types of softwares available but we prefer this HFSS 15th version. HFSS is nothing but a uh, high frequency structural simulator is commercial finite element method solver for electromagnetic structures from NSS corporation. It is a 3D electromagnetic simulation software to design and simulate high frequency electronic products such as antennas, antenna arrays, RF or microwave components. This is the flowchart of design and analysis using HFS software. Uh, three steps of processing. First step is pre-processing, nothing but uh, initialization of um, initialization process. Second one is solution step. Third one is post-processing, nothing but we can extract the results from this uh, results from HFSS. Using HFSS, we can extract results uh, as parameters, radiation patterns, uh, electronic field distribution. These are we can extract from third, third step. Okay. Here we can observe uh, in pre-processing uh, nothing but first step is geometry construction, alignment of uh, dimensions, all this material assignment. Material assignment is nothing but substrate materials like that. This is our next one, the boundary settings, the solution setup, all this. This is the pre-processing step. Second one is solution, excitation solution. Third step is extracting results from that antenna, design antenna. Design of this uh, triple octagonal ring slot antenna, uh, there are different types of polygon unit cells designed on the same substrate of past film PM27, but I preferred octagonal because uh, this uh, shape uh, gives high bandwidth, uh, high, uh, high bandwidth compared to remaining structures, it gives more than, uh, it is again uh, around 57.14% compared to remaining shapes, uh, remaining polygon units. MC unit cells, a uh, shape and bandwidth. Compared to tetragon, this octagonal shape gives 54.14% more bandwidth. That's why we prefer this shape. Actually, this is the extension of uh, previous work. It's uh, done by me, single and uh, double octagonal ring slot antennas. Uh, this antenna can resonate. Uh, frequencies are 7.7 gigahertz to 48.5 gigahertz. So approximately 11 frequencies. It resonates 11 frequencies and it covers microwave frequency band applications, C, X, K, U, K, K, A and V band applications. That is the main, uh, main advantage by uh, using this triple octagonal ring slot antenna and size also very uh, small compared to, we can compare that uh, size with uh, one rupee coin. These are the dimensions of a triple octagonal ring slot antenna. Dielectric constant, uh, uh, arteriodide uh, dielectric constant is equal to 2.2. Length of the substrate, this substrate length is 24 mm, width of the substrate 21 mm and thickness of substrate is 1 mm. Next feed line, this is the feed line. 7.20 mm feed width 1 mm. These are the sides of uh, this triple octagonal ring slot antenna. Uh, a, B, 2, G. This, uh, these are the sides of triple octagonal sides of uh, this antenna dimensions. The designed octagonal uh, microstrip patch antenna is simulated and analyzed by FEM method HFSS software version 15 antenna simulated results corresponding graphs are obtained to analyze the performance in terms of output parameters such as return loss, gain radiation patterns and VSWR. Actually, initial step is to design this antenna with the HFSS software, then it should be fabricated using any prototype machine and then um, practical results uh, should be measured by um, network analyzer. 
this uh, these three are main processing steps to design any antenna these are the simulated results because the present work is the extension of the previous work done by me on single and dual octagonal ring slot antennas those antennas were simulated and by using hfs software and fabricated using the nvis 72 prototype uh, mission and practical results are measured and analyzed by vector network analyzer at present i am able to present only simulated results because the fabrication process is in the process measured results will be uh, would be available okay these are the written loss uh, written loss of uh, triple octagonal antenna written loss uh, we can observe from this uh, graph all these written loss are less than 10 db so If the return loss is the power that is reflected by the antenna at the end of the transmitter or uh, receiver, lower return loss means efficiency of the antenna is high. So all these uh, at the 11 frequencies. Uh, if, if we uh, if we see these graph uh, at 11 frequencies, these values less than minus 10 dB. So which is uh, suitable for many uh, microwave frequency band applications. VSW or voltage standing wave ratio. It is the defined as the ratio of voltage mag maximum to mag uh, voltage minimum on a lossless line. So, if VSW or is above two means that antenna no, is not um, suitable for any application. So, if we observe this graph uh, for eleven uh, frequencies, these values are less than two. So. which is very suitable for uh, six bands applications six band microwave frequency up band applications these are the gain patterns radiation gain patterns gain radiation at 7.7 gigahertz frequency it uh, gain uh, around 4.4 gain radiation pattern at 8.0 and 8.5 here maximum gain we can observe from this pattern around 7.7 at 20 gigahertz frequency also it gives maximum gain 36.2 gigahertz and 40.9 gigahertz frequency and 45.5 gigahertz frequency This is forty-five point eight gigahertz frequency. Uh, for all eleven frequencies, uh, this antenna produces uh, desired radiation patterns. Majority it gives maximum radiation, a uh, maximum gain. Actually, this is the network analyzer used for previous work. Uh, fabrication is in process, so that uh, I am unable to present uh, measured results. which is uh, after simulation we fabricate this antenna by using prototypes uh, machine then we measured this uh, antenna results measure uh, antenna results like radiation patterns vsw vswr and uh, return loss by using this network analyzer almost all uh, uh, previous uh, two designs this uh, approximate results uh, um, that means uh, a uh, measured result uh, me measured results uh, we get measured results approximately equal to um, simulated results uh, uh, the two antennas uh, uh, we used as multi band applications uh, this is uh, this third uh, third design uh, is used for satellite applications in fixed satellite applications and mobile and space research we can utilize uh, this antenna for satellite applications this is the research uh, literature survey these two are my previous work design simulation fabrication of multi band octagonal patch antennas these two are single and dual octagonal ring slot antennas Have you any doubts, ma'am? 
Sir. Uh, you have any real images of antennas? Actually, I have two real images means fabricated. Uh, fabricated. Uh. You want to see fabricated antennas? Fabricated one. Yeah, fabricated man. One minute. Is it visible? Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, this is a uh, dual octagonal ring, sir. We can measure uh, this uh, antenna parameters using this network analyzer. We can simply interface this antenna to this network analyzer. Applications of the antenna. Application. It, it, it shows one minute. It covers this six frequency, uh, this uh, frequency band, so we can utilize for these band applications. If we uh, if we search for FCC uh, manual, in that each frequency has some particular application for our designed antenna um, can be used for that uh, particular application. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we understood. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, okay. Wonderful presentation and wonderful research work you have given. Thank you very much. I would like to thank my sir, Balaji Bhavan, sir. Uh, madam, it's a very wonderful presentation. Your research work is very appreciated. Moreover, the simulations are uh, highly good. Uh, thank, thank you, you for your kind presentation. Wish you all the best in our future thank endeavors. You. Good luck, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Sharmila Garu. And next participant, Sakil Satipriya, KL University. I would like to Satipriya Garu to have the presentation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, ma good evening, everybody. Uh, myself, Atiya Shahin, and my team members Satipriya and Saiteja are now going to present our project, which have uh, we have done in la uh, final year. Uh, our project is hand uh, recognition of handwritten digit using deep learning and CNN algorithm. We have used deep learning and CNN algorithm to recognize a handwritten. Uh, handwritten character recognition is a field of research in AI uh, and pattern recognition. The application is found in the optical character uh, recognition uh, and uh, in the more advanced intelligent character recognition systems is used. Here our main objective is to uh, here our main objective is to ensure that we are, are uh, whatever we write it should be re uh, converted into the uh, uh, converted and it should be shown in our system. 
the main project we have done it is here is whatever we write the digit if we write one uh, the output will be one like uh, we have written with handwritten the output will be uh, shown in as one uh, the problem with this project is to classify handwritten digits and the goal is to take an image of a handwritten digit and determine what the digit is uh, we have used the ranges from 1 to 9 and the main task, uh, tasks involved in this is we have downloaded the MINIST data set and then we'll pre-process this data set. Then we'll train the classifier that can be characterized, uh, ca characterized the handwritten digits and then we'll apply the model and test the data set. Uh, MINIST data set, uh, we have taken it from Kaggle uh, and it, this data set will contain 60,000 of training data set and uh, will uh, take 10,000 data, uh, data as a testing images. And this extended data set similar to MINIS data set is called as MNIS data set, which has been published in 2017. In this MNIS data set, 2,40,000 training images will be used. And in fr from this 2,40,000, 40,000 will be used to test the images. And we have used uh, uh, some models in our project. Uh, those models are CN and Inker, Navy Base and plotted, uh, plotted methods we have used. Uh, now, what, what we have done in our project, my friend will be, my friend Satipriya will continue. Good afternoon, sir. And the, this is the proposed methodology. And the aim of our project is to make an interface uh, that can be used to recognize user handwritten characters. We approached our problem using convolution neural networks in order to get a higher accuracy. Several researches have been undertaken to improve the accuracy of alphanumeric character prediction. Our research include that to some extent, but our main focus will be providing a GUI that can be used to uh, use it to easily predict characters for further use. And these are the methodology steps. <laughs> Image acquisition, pre-processing, segmentation, future extraction, classification, post-processing. Usually handwritten recognition is divided into six categories, namely image acquisition, pre-processing, classification, and post-processing. Coming to image acquisition, it takes input from the digital image. This, this device is called as electronic tablet. For this device is mainly, is mainly used in pen for digital nature. Handwriting devices is used in other methods such as scanners and directly writing in the computer for styles. Coming to pre-processing, it is the first phase of digit recognition and it has good recognizing rate. The main aim of the pre-processing is to remove variations and decrease the recognizing rate. And these variations is mainly including irregular size for the text, missing points <laughs> from the pen movements and slightly bent either left or right in the hand. Comparing the input from the stored pattern and digit finds the best match in your input class. <laughs> Coming to segmentation, excuse me. Oh, I'm not Hello, your slides are not moving, ma'am. Okay, ma'am, I'm not changing, I'm just explaining the steps. Okay, fine. Segmentation, coming to segmentation, it is mainly used in individual character of the image. In segmentation, all documents are in hierarchical way. All the lines present in the first level from segmentation by using histogram row. For every row, all words are using histogram column. And finally, the characters are extracted to the words. Coming to future extraction, it is mainly used in the extraction of pattern classification. Future extraction techniques is used in different methods like principal component analysis, linear discriminant analysis, and chain code. For this method, we have to extract the futures for individual character by using histogram. Classification. Classification is used in input image to present the HCR method. The futures are extracted from the input data from the training classifier like ANN. 
when the classifier comparing the input from a stored pattern data and it finds best matching for input class post processing <coughs> post processing is used to correct the misclassified results for applying linguistic knowledge post processing is the output of the shape recognition for handwriting method shape recognizers is used in single string character and these are the steps implemented uh, during handwritten digit recognition first is importing libraries and load the data set pre processing the data creating the model training the model evaluate the model and create gui to predict the digits coming to uh, import libraries and the load data set in the data set first import uh, we have to import all the libraries and need to train our model and this model keras library is already present in the data set which we have to use so we can import the data set and starts to work for project and that means load data method returns the training data and also testing data pre processing the data for this project the image data cannot used in directly for this model so we have to use some functions for process the data that is already presented in neural networks the dimension for this for this data is 60000 lakhs 28000 uh, 2828 for cnn model we have to require one more dimension for reshape the matrix to the shape coming to the create the model we have to create cnn model for python the cnn model is mainly consists of convolution for pooling layers the data is mainly represented as grid structures and this is the reason cnn works for good at image classification problems <coughs> when the data is in training process we have to deactivate some dropout layers and then we will uh, compile the model for the data optimizer next to coming to the training the model this model has to start the training data it will be used some keras functions and takes the training data validation data and batch size uh, batch size for this model <coughs> and it takes some time to train the data after training it will use the model next evaluating the model we have we have to use 10000 images in our data set it will be evaluated our model how it works for our model the testing data is not involved in training data therefore it is new to our model and the means data is well balanced so that we can get accuracy at the average of 95% next creating gui to predict the digits in gui we have to create a new file for build an interactive window to draw digits for canvas with button for recognizing the specific digit the tinter is the standard library for python we have to create function predict digit that takes image for input and it uses for the training value to predict the digit after that we have to create app class and response when sai teja hello sir good afternoon all of you i am myself sai teja based on this presentation based on our project my friend will explain all of things mainly in this project we have to add mainly when we compare that three data sets we have some get, we will have we will get some average accuracy in that accuracy which is best accuracy for uh, when compared to another algorithm and that we have to take that three algorithms we have to try the data sets in that data set we have to taking 6000 uh, 60000 images and we have to do, take 10000 images for testing in the data set we have to mention uh, 0 to 9 9 digits based on this based on this project we would like to implement uh, some more algorithms uh, which is to get better accuracy in that for future scope that the project Thank you.
thank you for giving this opportunity to show what we have done in our fourth year thank you sachipriya and team members for presenting your uh, paper I would like to call upon sri rupa chandrika student of andhra layala college to present the abstract Asia Conference on Communication, Computing, and IoT, and I am here to tell you one of the advancements which was implemented in the present scenarios. This is Rupa Chinna, student, Department of Electronics from the Andhra Nagar College. So I am here to discuss one of the advancements. We all hear the words that prevention is better than cure, and now I am here to tell you one of the best very fast way and. And it's almost around two years, but still there is a lack of vaccines for and the uh, demand is for the vaccines. 
because due to the many variations of coronavirus. So, until then we got the complete section of virus, we must follow some preventive measures, which will be the results of wearing masks, taping yes. and washing or sanitizing the hands frequently and maintaining some social distance among the people. So, the COVID pandemic is very high across the cross country, across the people and the cross contamination is very high. So, we all know the main factor of the coronavirus is it almost like to stay on the the coronavirus uh, nature is to stay more likely on the life services for a prolonged period, which leads to the most spread of the most spread among the community. So we need to take care of all the uh, lifeless surfaces. So in order to so in order to eradicate the risk of viruses, we need to introduce some measures, some IOD measures, and and now I am going to tell you about such type of machine which helps to eliminate the virus and eradicate the flow. That what is full body sanitizing machine, which is a personal sanitization enclosure that can efficiently eradicate the risk of infection. So now we are discussing about the, its functioning and working, the structure and its functioning. We can see the sanitizing kit is made up at home, uh, it is maybe a tunnel kind of structure or in the metal plate where there are the exit and entry points and the two ends and the other two ends will be covered with the plastic sheets or as a sheet, as a sheets which from the entry and exit points the human can enter with the tunnel and after the sanitization they can leave from the exit point. We can see when the human enters with the sanitization kit the sensor PIR, which is the passive infrared sensor, which locates at the center at the top of top of the sanitizer, the sanitizer gate. When the human enters into the gate, the sensor detects the human movement and sends signals to the motor, and the motor sends the signals to the machine, which triggers all the machine, and then the raises. The sprayers which are located in the tunnel get activated and start sanitizing the human body. When the human body is sanitized for two hours, they can heal from the exit point. The toe. They can heal from the exit point. Then there will be a chance for the next human to come into the tunnel and get sanitized over it. So the total time for the sanitizing the human can be at least 10 to 15 seconds. Even uh, for a full complete sanitization can uh, complete can not over 10 to 15 seconds. In order to look, you can see at least a 4 to 5 times can, can be complete the sanitization in a minute. So in order to calculation, I can say at least 250 to 300 humans can complete the sanitization in an hour. Uh, the equipments, the, the simple equipments which can be needed in making these project cars are a booster pump which is helps the user to preserve the sanitizer liquid into the uh, tunnel and next are uh, arm booster pipe which is also works in the same process where spray nozzles, I almost say that there is, there is a need of 7 to 8 spray nozzles in the machine which can sanitize the human from all the sites which can cover the objects and there are the whole human body. And next the PIR sensor, which is the main component in the tunnel. The PIR sensor measures the distance in between the human and their view of vision. So they can spray in accordance with it. And next, type of nozzle conductor. Next, storage tanker. Uh, the storage tanker is used to store the sanitization liquid. And next, HDPE sheets. That what I said, which one should be hand at the either sides of the tunnel. And next, the sanitizer liquid. Sanitizer liquid can be chosen on the basis of chemical sanitizer. And next, uh, uh, alcohol based sanitizer. And another one, new technology, silver nanotechnology, which works on the basis of foam one gel. The silver nanotechnology, which is a very proven method, it is a new adopting method. Uh, development. It is a new development in the sanitization tunnel. It is a well proven method which helps in killing the virus and can which helps uh, mostly in saving the human skin by using the chemical nature of the alcohol sanitizers, which is also the sodium peroxide. They will affect the human skin, which helps in the rashes or uh, rashes of using frequently. So this single nano technology which helps in the basis of humanity. Where the sanitizer will come out in the form of a four, which uh, 
Rupa Chandrika. Anyone have doubt? Rupa. Next. Next. Next participant. C H Veera Bhuvaneshwari, student of Andhra Laila College, to give her presentation. Thank you for being here today. I am CH Bhuneshwari and I am from the Department of Electronics of Andhra Dialog College. I am here today to talk about the, the Bluetooth anti theft device. Now, what is one of the greatest threats to our personal welfare is the theft of our wallet or any other gadgets that can be replaced at significant heart attack and expense. A security is a primary concern. 
everywhere and for everything. Every person wants its wallet, keys, kits, pets, and other gadgets. Would you ever consider leaving thousands of rupees in your wallet and leaving your wallet somewhere else without giving any protection? Well, that is what you do every time. So, in order to prevent that, theft, an anti theft device is in the user's An anti theft device is any device that is used to prevent or protect the unauthorized appropriation of the items that are considered valid. At present, more than 80% of mobile and of Bluetooth technology. Besides, it is easy to establish a Bluetooth wireless sensor due to its low cost and low power consumption. So, a Bluetooth module is prepared and that Bluetooth module is connected to the Bluetooth of your mobile. Here, the mobile contains locate beams based software to connect and measure the BLE beacon's distance. The other end, that is the hardware, device contains a microcontroller interface BLE beacon. If the connectivity between the mobile and the hardware is more than 2 meters, the, the mobile gives the signals to the model and the model gives an alarm to easily find the test. And how about to hear that uh, we have the hardware device which is small and looks like a keychain. This device adopts latest Bluetooth 4.0 to low consumption technology. It can effectively protect your kids, pets, valuables from being stolen or lost within 10 meters of the distance range. When out of this range, your phone and this iPad will automatically give an alarm and we want. The location function is extremely perfect for those who to exactly find the location. What more can be said? Eight devices in one phone at the same time is under a small head photo. So, who wants to lose their values? No one, right? So, I suggest that the Bluetooth and the this device is very and lose their values. This is essentially expands your reach to anywhere in the world. The more number of people use this, the better the capability of the device. Thank you. Do anyone have thanks? At, uh, do we have any alternative app? We have a find a app to locate the all, the all the functions of that module. Up to, up to up what range? It is because it's the Bluetooth one, no? 10 meters, so 10 meters, so 10 meters. Okay. Anyone part? Any other? I would like to uh, invite any other participant who is ready to give the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, participants. We can conclude this session for today. The second session is closed, and tomorrow morning at ten fifteen a.m. we'll start our second day national conference. Thank you very much. Thus, lots of thanks from Department of Electronics and Reliable College. Thank you.